Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome to my talk. So I'd like you to meet my boys, Girdle and Turing. They really are my heroes. Um, I'm just absolutely fascinated by impossibility phenomena in mathematics. So results where you can use mathematical reasoning to show the limitations of powerful so formal systems, like um, axioms for mathematics or general algorithms. So no matter how clever you are, you can't solve the halting problem, for example, by an algorithm. So I find this really intoxicating. Um, but uh, this 1930s theories on mathematical logic and computability theory, they're rather well understood nowadays. Um, however, we have a kind of a modern equivalent of these 1930s theories in computational complexity theory. So um, that's, we're trying to understand efficient computations. And the most obvious question you can ask, P versus NP in that area, is wide open. So that's in contrast to, you can view this as a kind of a complexity theoretic analog of problems that Gödel and Turing solved in their own respective theories in the very papers that started the field. But here, the most obvious problem is wide open. Nobody knows how to attack it. And I guess a, a few decades back, people were more optimistic. So if I rewind to 1980s, so one line of reasoning back then was that, okay, maybe we can't understand general algorithms, but at least we could start by uh, trying to understand restricted models of computation. So one particular restricted model that was all the rage in the 80s was uh, monotone computations or monotone circuits. So you can represent any algorithm as a Boolean circuit. So you have the input bits at the bottom and then a bunch of logical gates that are applied to input bits and maybe reused later on in the computation. Uh, uh, at the very end, you have the, the top gate of the circuit would output the um, end result of the computation. So one natural restriction of computation is that of monotone computation, where I'm only using logical AND and logical OR gates. So no negation gates allowed, just AND and OR. Um, this is an example of such a monotone circuit. Of course, it's limited in that this model can only compute monotone Boolean functions. So functions that satisfy the property that if you have any two inputs, x and y, that are kind of ordered in this way that any bit of x is at most the corresponding bit of y, then the function value is similarly ordered. So in fact, monotone Boolean functions are exactly the class of functions you can compute using uh, monotone circuits. And so given a monotone Boolean function, you can ask what is its monotone circuit complexity, the least size of a circuit that computes it, the least number of gates. That kind of measures the number of steps you need to compute it, like its time complexity. So a big breakthrough in the 80s was when Rasporov showed uh, a lower bound on the monotone circuit complexity of the K-click function. So k click is a monotone function. It takes as input a graph on n vertices. So for any pair of vertices, you have an input bit that determines whether or not the corresponding edge is there. So the input describes a graph, and you output yes if the graph contains a k click. So a subset of k nodes where all the pairwise edges are present. It's one of these canonical NP-complete functions. And Rasper showed monotone so circuits can't do it. You can, you can even interpret this as a kind of a separation of P and NP in the monotone world. Um, so I guess at the time, this, I wasn't there, but I, I would imagine this kind of inspired people to um, some excitement. It's like to separate P and NP in the actual world, non-monotone world, well, all you need to do is to kind of understand circuits that have, in addition to AND and OR, negation gates. Um, OK, maybe it was a bit. Uh, too optimistic. Turns out these models are a lot less powerful than like, fully general algorithms. And one result to this effect was uh, Tardosh's uh, function. So he, uh, she rather, came up with a monotone function, I'll just call it Tardosh, monotone function that requires large monotone circuits, exponential size ones, yet you can still compute the function efficiently with the usual algorithms. Um, so it's a problem in P. So this is kind of showing that actually monotone circuits don't really model well what happens for in the kind of real world. 
with negation gates. So maybe this dampened the excitement a little bit. Um, but um, uh, nevertheless, I, I study these things nowadays, not because I have the ambition to, for this long to separate P and NP, but because for me, I guess for everybody, <laughs> these still remain one of the most powerful models of computation for which we can show unconditional impossibility results, lower bounds on their size. And, and I have the usual mathematician's excuse, like these are beautiful because they're connected to so many other areas of theoretical computer science, areas that are seemingly disparate. Um, my PhD was in the area called communication complexity, studying how many bits of communication between two players are needed. It's a model that looks very, doesn't look like a circuit, but there are ways to translate questions back and forth. So I'll tell you today about uh, a new result we have in monotone complexity. It's a new monotone circuit lower bound for a function that's really, really, really simple. It's just solving uh, systems of linear equations. So th that's an easy thing. elimination can do it efficiently. But we show monotone circuits can't. You need exponential size monotone circuits to do this. It really kind of pinpoints the limitation of this model. So I, let me define carefully what I mean by this problem. I call it lin -ec, I'm solving linear equations, but for this to make sense, this needs to be a monotone function. So let me carefully define this function, okay? So it's defined as follows. So first, I have a set of n variables, and imagine a list of all possible ternary linear equations of a GF2. So basically, for any triple of variables, you would have a line here saying the sum of the variables is 1 or the sum of the variables is 0. There are roughly n cubed many equations in my list. So the input to my function, okay, the input to my function is a subset of these equations as determined by just an indicator vector. So the input of function, binary string that for each item in my list indicates whether or not I should include that equation in my system. So it's an indicator vector for a set, set of equations. And I just define, you know, interpret it as a set. You should output yes if the set is inconsistent. So unsatisfiable, infeasible. So define it this way in order to get a monotone function. So if I flipped in the input a 0 to a 1, so I would increase the number of 1s in the input, that means I'm adding a new uh, constraint, new equation to my system. I'm only making it harder to satisfy. So it in increases the chances of it being inconsistent. So that's how I do get a, a monotone function. It kind of encodes this uh, in solving linear equations. Okay, so this, as I said, it's a really simple function. It is, in fact, the only other example besides Tardos's function that exhibits this exponential separation between complexities in monotone and non-monotone worlds. Um, it admits even fast parallel algorithms. So this is somehow the class of problems that, efficient, that can be efficiently solved in parallel. It's not known how to do Tardish's function fast in parallel, so I can claim that our function is even easier in this kind of uh, formal sense. Okay, so I hope I've kind of solved the result, but it's also interesting how we prove it. Maybe it's more interesting how we actually uh, prove it than the result itself. And to try to explain that, uh, let me um, just give an example of a monotone circuit that is attempting to compute this function I just defined. So wh what could a monotone circuit do to try to see whether a system of uh, linear equations was satisfiable or not? So here I have some sample input, so some set of uh, linear equations. What a monotone circuit could do, this is one way, is you could start deriving consequences of those equations. So you could have a gate in the circuit that's now labeled by another um, equality, which is, would in this case be a logical consequence of this and this. I mean, I just add these two lines together and get this. Now, monotone circuits, they can't do this arithmetic of adding, but what I can model is this logical reasoning of um, that if these two equations are part of my input, so the input bits are set to one, well, then the gate and of these is true, values to true, if and only this 
its label is a logical consequence. So you could have a whole kind of chain of these kinds of implications. Gates that are labeled by uh, these intermediate equations um, that evaluate true if and only if the associated label is a logical consequence of the inputs. So you would have as your top gate the trivial um, <coughs> contradiction, 0 equals 1. So if you can derive 0 equals 1 from the input, you know it must be um, uh, inconsistent. So such circuits, they would be efficient, they would be small, if you could guarantee such a derivation with only few gates, so a few different kinds of linear equations. Um, so one way to do this would be if you could do this with just um, equations of bounded width, meaning equations that only mention few variables. Like there are only, if I fix some bound, a constant 10, there are only n cubed many equations that speak about um, uh, 10 variables each. So that would give you a small circuit. But this doesn't work. I mean, we knew it didn't work because we proved a lower bound. But this attempt fails because in the area that's called propositional proof complexity, people have studied these kinds of derivations. And they as one of the oldest results is that there are unsatisfiable systems over uh, linear systems over GF2, which you can't refute using these kind of logical inferences that only talk about a bounded number of variables. So this attempt failed. But the punchline is that we actually show that any monotone computation, any monotone circuit that tries to compute this function essentially needs to do this. So we show, and this is kind of the more general theorem, is that you give me any monotone circuit, if it's small, I can extract from it one of these refutations of small width, which contradicts these age-old results in proof complexity. So what we really prove is a kind of a, we call it a lifting theorem, a transference theorem, where by from lower bounds and proof complexity, you can derive lower bounds for monotone circuits. So that's really the, the linear equation was just one example. You can apply it to many other examples. So it's a kind of a general black box tool. Solve some open problems in monotone complexity, not all. Um, for example, it's still open what the monotone circuit complexity is of the perfect matching function. So input is a graph, your output yes, if it contains a perfect matching. For us, I've proved a quasi-polynomial lower bound. I want to prove an exponential lower bound. Maybe that's something I'll think about. Also, now I have a kind of a new taste for proof complexity since we found this new connection between the areas. So I'm interested in maybe reading about it more. There's a new textbook coming out next year. So I'm, I'm hoping to find juicy problems. Uh, are there. There's a draft online of, of the book. So yes, let me end here. Thank you. Thank you very much.